It is another edition of the On The Mic Podcast, and it's been so long since I talked to this guy, probably way too long. Uh, he is a legend in the, in the sport of boxing, especially here in the Chicagoland area. Um, if he's on the show, you know there's a big fight coming up, and it's actually coming up tomorrow, Wednesday 24th. He is the one and only Bobby Hits. Sir, how are you? Good, Mike. How you doing? Good. It's been way too long. I mean, there's yeah, so many things. It has been a while. Um, I, I will always give you credit. You were the first boxing promoter to let me come cover, you know, an event here, whether it be locally or, or out of out of state. So you're actually, I don't know if you know this, you're pretty much the only one putting fights on in Chicago these days, MMA or boxing. So I'm just going to ask you straight up, all these years, all the time doing it, a global pandemic, like how do you keep this going? Well, I got to tell you, it's, 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 Hasn't been easy. It's been a rough two years. We've gotten one show off um, in, in, in two years' time. This will be our second. The last one was in July uh, in an outdoor baseball stadium in Rosemont, which was really excellent, was well-received. We had live rock and roll band. We had the great fights. We had fireworks. It was everything in one, in one evening that you could imagine, and everybody had a great time. So we're hoping to, to garner the same uh, the same sentiment after uh, after tomorrow night is over with. So, uh, but it hasn't been easy dealing with, you know, even as simple something as simple as trying to buy gloves, um, getting a hold of a big company like Everlast, uh, it, just things of that nature. It's it's very difficult to get work done. And and all your years doing this, would you say this has been one of the biggest challenges throughout your career? Is that this COVID pandemic? No, I gotta tell you, once the commissions, once the commissions got involved, everything was a challenge. You know, once you know, so it's the bureaucratic bullshit, and um, you, you know, every everything else is easy. It's just part of a day's a day's work. Um, putting out fires is part of what you do, and you just have to keep the faith and believe it's going to happen. And you know, to me, I know I can't, I can't control the outside world. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So. I do the best that I can to make sure that I do my job the right way. And when you're relying on fighters and trainers and managers and things of that nature, well, I just go with God because you just never know what could happen. Then add the commission on top of it. It's a double whammy. I can only imagine, especially uh, yeah. those who follow combat sports. They know the, the story of the Illinois athletic commission, not the uh, most fun thing to deal with. Um, but it's kind of a metaphor, right, Bobby? And we will talk about your event here in a moment. But it's kind of a metaphor, and especially you being in the position you are now, putting on events, promoting events, putting on these great fights. And you look at not just these last two years, but obviously all the other challenges. But when you do look at these last two years, it's exactly like you're back in the boxing ring yourself or you're in the gym yourself because you have to keep for keep moving forward no matter what punches are thrown your way. Right. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'd rather be fighting than doing this. The fighters have it easy. Trust me when I tell you, you guys, you have it easy compared to what I have to do. It might not look, it might look that what I have to do is easy, but trust me, when I'm up at two in the morning last night trying to make a fight and you're sleeping and, you know, on your 16th dream, you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it doesn't stop, but you know, um, it's okay. It's just part of it. And, you know, in dealing with people and understanding all the different rules we have to follow and whatever, I mean, it's okay. I just wish that there was a, just a touch of gray, just a little bit of a gray area because everything's subject to interpretation and how you interpret it, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. I want to talk so, uh, specifically the location because when you talk about Chicago and, and a legend like yourself, especially in this city, you know, being at the Rosemont Rumble, I mean, we have the Rosemont Rumble tomorrow, but being in Rosemont, you're not too far from the city, you're not too far from the suburbs, you're right next to the airport. Is that like a prime location for you? You know, when we discovered this place some 30 years ago uh, to do fights, it, it's been um, really great. And actually, I was reminded that 27 years ago on this day, uh, the 23rd of November, we put on one of the most epic showdowns Chicago has ever seen. It was Bridgeport versus Melrose Park, Tony La Rosa versus... Lenny the Rage LaPaglia, the Rock versus the Rage. And I was just reminded of this like 10 minutes ago that that fight actually took place. We did that fight 27 years ago. And it was 
wall to wall people. The neighborhoods came out. People were just on their feet. The the fight was a three round war, knockdowns. It, it was it was tremendous. And people walk it, it, to me to be able to make that local matchup at the time that I did in my early stages of promoting and and bringing out the neighborhoods. It made me understand that that's what Chicago needs to keep going neighborhood against neighborhood because everybody comes out and they have a rooting interest. I don't like, you know, like in my main event tomorrow night, I'll have a kid from Detroit versus a kid from Cleveland, but they're both fighting for a very, very serious championship. Um, the USBA and NABF titles, both vacant. And the winner of that fight goes on to the world contention. So that fight has a lot of meaning. Go back, geez, I don't know how many years ago it was when I did um, Reggie Johnson versus Antonio Tarver for the right to fight Roy Jones happened at the Ramada Rumble at the Ramada Hotel. So it's not it's not uncommon to see these big types of fights on our local shows here uh, with world with world rating uh, uh, implications. So, uh, but the local the local guys, the neighborhoods against neighborhoods, that's what keeps bringing the people out. And every show, that's what I try to do. Well, I, I remember I was in the building with uh, Mike Lee a few years ago at the Rosemont Rumble, and it was a great show. And then, obviously, uh, I moved, and then COVID took over. So this would be one of my first opportunities to, to be around uh, for a, an event, and, I, and I'm super excited for it. And I do want to talk about this main event here for you tomorrow. And I don't want to go back and hopefully I could be allowed after saying this. You talked about 27 years ago. I'm thankful I am where I am now because I was two years old when you were putting on that fight 27 years ago. <laughs> and here I am, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but if you put it in perspective, I mean, it's, it's really wild that, you know, all these upstart guys come out and try to do bio. I mean, I've been doing this over 30 years on the business end, not to mention my fight career. And it's like, you know, and I, and I hate the term that they're done that because it's so corny, but like I've been where you're going. It's like, to me, you're not going to show me anything. I'm not going to be surprised. Um, so-and-so wants to brag about being on TV. I've had a million shows. It's like, it, it's no big deal because in the annals of boxing and in the world that we come from, you're only as good as the last show you put on. So today, we're at, we'll have an amateur show this evening, tomorrow a pro show, and then guess what? Come Friday, come Thursday, nobody will even remember me, and it's on to the next guy putting the show on the VFW Hall, and he's the greatest guy in the world. So, it, like, to me, I have no ego about what I do, but when I sit there and reminisce about how long I've been doing this, and you put it in perspective, you were two 27 years ago, I mean, that's mind-blowing to me. I, and I love it. And I'll say this, you know, I remember the first time I talked to you, you, you know, you had told me I, I had to go research you, Mike. I had to make sure that I was I was talking to the right people, you know, about my events. And, and you put on a hell of an event in Rosemont. I went to one of your fights in Elk Grove Village. Like you truly do bring out, I think for me, being an MMA guy, also spending some time in the boxing world, you bring out the best in me. And then you bring out the best in Chicago because of that mindset that you have of, of bringing everyone together locally. But as you mentioned, your main event tomorrow night, you got two undefeated fighters, one from Cleveland, one uh, from Detroit, Alante Green and Taylor Doerr. What makes you so excited for, for this main event tomorrow? Well, here, it, it harkens back to 27 years ago when I did the Illinois State Cruiserweight Championship. 27 years later, uh, almost to the day, I'm doing a world implication title fight for two undefeated guys. So it's kind of, you know, life comes full circle. So here we are again, two young guys, two upstarts. Someone's going to go on. Someone's going to figure out what they have to do next. And that's a great, that's an interesting matchup. If you're not even, if you're just this casual fan, that's the type of fight you want to see. You know, so many guys come out and they cross the border and they want to do the hero versus zero and everybody beats their chest like they did something. To me, I don't want to do that kind of boxing. It's embarrassing. It, it makes no sense. And it has no place in the world we live in today. In 2021, there's way too much information. Why would you try to lie to the public and feed them bullshit? It, it, to me, you can't do that. I have another kid, Jimmy Quitter, who's 4-0, fighting a kid, Robert McGee, who's 5-0. At that young stage, you would very rarely get a guys, guys to do that at that young stage in their career. But so 
this fight here, the whole show from, from bell to bell is going to be action packed, great fights, great even matchups. And there are no blowouts on this show. So if someone gets a first round blowout, they earned it because these are not matched that way. Trust me. And, and I, and I will second that statement. I, like I said, I've been to your shows and there's no lopsided events that you put on, no lopsided matchups that you put on. It's like, you know me though, Bobby, because I was just going to ask you outside of your main event, what are, what are some of the fighters or fights you're looking forward to the most? You know, the whole undercard, you, um, you, uh, you have a uh, uh, Barrera uh, lightweight kid on the show. Um, just the whole, the whole undercard is, is really strong and solid. Uh, we got this big guy tank, a big heavyweight kid. He's undefeated. Fight another undefeated guy. So there's like, I think three undefeated guys on this card. I don't have it in front of me. We're at the actually getting set up for the weigh-in right now. So I'm like in a hundred different directions. But I know we have two or three undefeated matchups on the show, which is unprecedented. Where do you get that? You go over the border and you see some guy that bought 800 fights for himself, fighting a kid that's one in 13. He beats him in 32 seconds and then runs around like he actually did something. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Oh, I just got I just got handed uh, the list. Let me see. Okay, you have Chris Chapman, who's a great, great workhorse type fighter. Been in it with everybody. He's beat some guys, lost some guys, but this guy is a nonstop punching machine, kind of Joe Frazier esque. He's taking on Robin Zafir, who Robin is from Sweden. He's undefeated. It's a kid from Sweden, so we have a little bit of international flavor on the show. Um, then I talked about the quitter fight, uh, Lante Green and We talked about Angel Barrera and uh, Isaiah Bernal, um, little Johnny Lewis and Andre Donovan. Uh, um, you know, Johnny Lewis's father was on that show 27 years ago. And now here he is, is his son is on this next show 27 years later. I mean, it's crazy. And then to round it out, we have Dante Pettigrew and, and Dewan Calloway, the two heavyweights I spoke of. So, um, it, it's going to be a great night of boxing and it's actually going to be broadcast too on a uh, boxing TV, BXNG TV is doing a pay-per-view on that. So, um, so we, we, people who are in the area or who, you know, the mom will let them out of the house. Uh, they could get it on the internet and watch it. I will definitely share that on my social media tonight, as well as tomorrow to promote the event for you, Bobby. Uh, that that's an easy thing for me to do. Um, and I'll just say this, you know, tomorrow it's, it's the biggest drinking holiday of the year before Thanksgiving. And uh, instead of doing all of that, you're putting on a great fight. If you're a fight fan and you're in Chicago, there's no better place to be the Rosemount rumble. Do you still have tickets available? Yeah, there's still tickets available at H I T Z boxing.com. That's hits boxing.com. Um, also, I went to one of my first MMA fights like two weeks ago at Cicero stadium and my nephew fought in it. And Rocco Sabatino was his first amateur fight and he won. He did really well. And it was kind of exciting. So, you know, maybe there might be some uh, MMA fights in my future. Who knows? <laughs> I, I honestly think you would be perfect for that. And uh, we need that here, especially locally in the Rosemont, Chicagoland area. Uh, we absolutely need that. So uh, you could sign me up for that. I, I really quick, and I w just want to say one thing. For you to take time out while you're setting up means the absolute world to me. And I really do appreciate all of your time, all the time that you give me. Um, you know, this, this world now and, and where we are in, in the state of boxing, we had Wilder Fury 3. We just had Canelo beat Caleb Plant. And last weekend, Terrence Crawford sent Sean Porter into retirement. It's three of the best fights we've had all year have just happened back to back to back. Where do you feel we are in this in the state of boxing right now? Well, I, I think that someone needs to come out and be able to captivate the general public. Someone has to be able to come out and, and be that guy that they follow. Listen, I'm a boxing guy. There's not many guys that I follow. So if you're losing me, how am I going to gain you? You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, when everybody thinks that Jake Paul is the second coming, we have a real problem in boxing, you know? So um, um, you, you need these local shows. You need to build the product. And you need someone that the fans can get behind, someone who's the people's champion, a, a kid who's from the neighborhood that, you know, people could resonate with. And I think that's going to be the sell. It's always been the salvation of boxing. Um, being a bad guy doesn't work anymore because we're such a um, such a uh, um, politically correct society. We all have to be good people. 
but whatever is a good person, that's someone's interpretation of what a good person is. And we won't get political here. So, you know, to me, I think you just have to kind of be the type of fighter that people want to miss a wedding for to stay home and watch you or tell their girlfriend, I can't come out tonight because I got to watch the fights. That's the guy. When I was a kid, there wasn't a chance that I would miss any fight. No fight that I ever miss on Friday, on Saturday and Sunday on, 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 um, on ABC, NBC, and CBS. No matter what was, I could be at a wedding. I'd say I have to go to the bathroom. I get up, I go in the bar, tell the bartender, here's 20, put the TV on, I got to watch some fight. And my girlfriend would come look at me, where are you at? I'm watching the fight. So there isn't that guy now that I go out of my way for. So to me, we need to get that guy again. And uh, I do agree with you, and, and I don't want to spend too much time on this guy, but since you mentioned him, I am going to ask you. I think the only reason I turn on a, a fight card that features a man named Jake Paul is unfortunately now because I just want to see him get knocked out. I just want to see if it's going to happen. And uh, when you're cherry-picking 40-year-old UFC fighters, it is what it is. But what's your take on him entering boxing? Well, that's the whole point. It's that, you know, listen, he hasn't really picked on a, a true boxer yet. And it's just like, okay, you want to pick on these MMA guys in the world of boxing? Cool. Now go fight them in MMA and see how well you do. So it's not fair to the MMA guy either. And that's what everybody has to realize. Everybody always says, well, what do you think of MMA versus boxing? That's like comparing NASCAR racing to Formula One racing. There's, there's wheels, but that's about the only comparison that you could have in a driver. You know, so I, I have a lot of respect for those guys that do that MMA because it's it's a really it's a really really super tough endeavor and um, uh, Keith Hackney was a friend of mine from years back when he was one of the innovators of the sport so so I have a long relationship with with people who were in that sport when it first was in its incubation stages so um, nothing but respect for those competitors and I think what Jake Paul is doing is just diluting diluting both sports because he's here. Not that the kid doesn't train hard or do his part, you know, or, or whatever he thinks he's doing. I think he does put his time in. He definitely doesn't call it in. Um, but he's marketing himself correctly. But you young guys out there have to realize he's not the real deal. Trust me. The real deal was Evander Holyfield. That's the real deal. Those guys were the fighters that deserve those types of accolades, those types of followings, the guys who really did this thing. For real. He's doing it for real for the moment, but it's, he, he's not, it's not his livelihood. You know what I mean? Uh, his yeah, livelihood no. is getting on, getting on YouTube and acting silly, I guess, which I would have made him, I would have made billions of dollars, not millions, billions, if I could have followed me around 30 years ago. I could only imagine. I mean, I got to say, it's, yeah. it's almost like uh, I, I'm getting the MMA guy in me is starting to get a little more boxing on this podcast. Uh, the last episode was Jerry Cooney, and now I've got Bobby Hitz. People are going to start wondering if I'm dabbling too much into the boxing world, but I'd rather talk to some of the best minds in the sport, uh, and I obviously want to promote your event. But one thing be, before I let you go, and, and I, again, really appreciate all your time. You wait, know, wait, you had, Jerry, you had Jerry Cooney on? Yeah, I had. Uh, so when I, I left. love Jerry Cooney. When I, uh, about two years ago in 2019, I left and took a job at Sirius XM. And uh, one of my first shows was with Jerry Cooney and Randy uh, Gordon. Uh, oh, Randy Gordon. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I worked their show a lot on Sirius XM. Jerry and I became very close. Um, reached out to him before the Canelo fight. Didn't think he was going to come on. And we, we spent an hour together on this show. And it's uh, it's He's starting to make one of my, more and more. Yeah, he he was one of my favorite fighters coming up. I tell you, that was that was my guy, Jerry Cooney. Him and when he fought Larry Holmes was hard because I was a big Larry Holmes fan. So that was a hard fight to root for. There, so. There's just something, and, and I, I'm not going to say I haven't learned it in the MMA and the UFC world and all the fighters I've had on this show, but there's there's still something a little bit more deeper in getting to know the boxer the, and the person than sometimes right. the MMA fighter. Um, I do right. Think I, right. I would have to stop you there, though. I, I, I talked about not having that one fighter. There is one fighter that I really like, it's Tyson Fury. I do like him. So I, I will go out of my way to watch him. I totally forgot about that. Tyson I'll, Fury. I'll ask you real, he fights I'll, so real quick on him. Um, what, what is it? Is it the way he, he fights in the ring, the way he markets himself? Or, Bobby, is it his story? You know me. I, I get so attached to the personal story and what leads everybody into that ring or into that cage. And Tyson Fury 
was one of the most, he's the easiest walking example of what it means to be a fighter. And now what it means to be a prize fighter world champion for you, someone who's been doing this his whole life. What is it about Tyson Fury that makes you can't miss? I mean, I think it's his story for sure. It's definitely the story. It's, it's, it's his, his method of, you know, not giving a crap. He, he'll fight anybody. He'll say anything. Um, he's brash, but he backs it up kind of Ali-esque. But I think, I, you know, I really just like, I, I like how he carries himself. I like what a gentleman he is. I like, uh, I like, uh, um, I just like him. I think he's a good representative for the sport, you know, because he came through a lot of adversity and whatnot. And, and I think he, he's shown himself to be great, you know. I don't want to keep you too long. I, w I do want to hit this, though, because, uh, you know, the, when, when you start talking about a Bobby Hits event, a lot of people, especially locally, they've got their eyes and their ears all on, you know, the boxing world. And uh, whether it's someone in the crowd tomorrow or someone who may watch this and they're, and they're just interested in either going down a, a career path of boxing or one day fighting for you, what is your best advice for younger fighters out there who may want to get involved in, in, in not only the sport, but with you? Get an education, go to school, stay away from <laughs> boxing. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, everybody thinks that this is easy. And it's just, it's not. So, um, you know, you have to, I think you have to be willing to listen. So willing to listen and understand you don't know everything. And this is the type of business and sport that it's instinctual. It's, it's over time that you learn things. And it's over a lot of experiences, good, bad, and indifferent. So I think if somebody wants to really be an understudy for real, then, you know, then that's one thing. But if they think they're going to come in, I've seen a lot of guys come in um, and think they're going to set the world on fire. And pretty soon their pants are on fire and running out the door and you never see them again because they realize, holy cow, this is real, you know, and, and, um, and you're not playing with Monopoly money. It's real. So uh, it's not for the faint of heart, trust me. Well, we've got the Rosemont Rumble tomorrow, Wednesday, November 24th. Bobby, I hope I could be there and uh, would love to, you know, cover the event and, and uh, do anything I can to help promote your event here. Uh, you know, I know it's a day away, but I definitely love going to your shows. You put on some amazing shows. And uh, this is something that one of the first things of being back home, because I moved back home late last fall after a lot of personal stuff. And, uh, you know, I saw you had your show in July. I saw it the morning of, you're such a gentleman. You still invited me out. I couldn't make it because of work, but uh, you know, to have, to have you putting on shows again, I can just tell you as someone, I consider you a friend now, not just somebody that I, I love to have on the show, but uh, it lights the fire for me being back home. It, it makes me want to get up and do this. So someone who puts on local shows, Bobby, I'm going to, I'm going to be in your ear. If you're thinking about MMA, please, we need you. Listen, listen. I, and I have a great relationship with the guys at CES who are out, out East are, are my dear friends and they've been on me to bring some local shows there. So who knows it could happen, but uh, I, I love your, your interest and your vigor for this, for both sports, because it's really important. And um, you know, anything I could ever do with you, I'd be more than, more than happy to do so for sure. Well, I, that means the world to me. Listen, guys, I, I'll say it all the time. I mean, let, let's not be stupid tomorrow. We got hits boxing, Rosemont rumble, don't go out. I know it's blackout Wednesday and let's all get drunk and, and enjoy the night before Thanksgiving. You do the same thing here. We serve booze. There's a lot of, there's a lot of interesting things here for you young ladies. There's always good, good looking single men here for you guys. There's always good looking single girls. It's like, it's like, it's like New Year's Eve and fight night all wrapped up into one. Come on, have a nice time. You know, tickets are still available at HITZ Boxing. That's hitsboxing.com. Boxing is truly better live. But if you can't make it out, it's bxngtv.com, boxing, bxngtv.com for the pay-per-view. So you can see that. And trust me, um, these fights we put on are, are put together with a lot of thought and care. And if I've ever put on a bad fight, trust me, that's not the fight I wanted to put on. That's all the fighter would let me put him on with. And what I'm doing is I'm weeding out those types of guys that don't want to put it on the, put it on the line and see what they're made of. Cause I, cause I'm only as good as the last fight that I did. And I want every fight to be great. And I want to try to outdo myself every time out. So my, 
the level of talent that I'm trying to work with now is only the best of the best here locally. The best of the best that's available for me to work with, that's all I want to work with. The guys that want to just pretend and go buy fights for themselves, go over the border. It's not for us. We're not doing that here. And it well, means- let me just say, it'll be a perfect table setter for me to be there tomorrow because uh, we got Thanksgiving on Thursday. I don't really do the whole family thing and talk to everybody and, oh, my God, everybody, I love everybody. And No, I'm more of a let's just sit down, let's eat. But then we got the Bears game with no Justin Fields. Apparently, Matt Nagy's getting fired after Thursday. So, like, we've got all these things that I don't want to be a part of. I want to be a part of Rosemount Rumble tomorrow. It'll set the table for the holiday weekend. And if I'm going, I encourage everybody around the Chicagoland area, get your tickets at hitzboxing.com. Bobby Hits, cool. as always. You're Thank a true you. gentleman. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, brother. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. My best to your mother. Hope everything's okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank my you. man. Thank I'll you. talk to you later. Thank you.